Hello. Hello. Welcome to Wow, well, you know, I swear our our you know, our, our our voices sound so much clearer this time. <laughs> yeah. We're not like having to kind of calibrate for like internet latency time or you know, theoretical internet latency times or anything like that. Yeah, no, it's uh you know, I'm I don't know, something about telehealth just doesn't I don't think it's it's quite as, as real as the real thing. It's not the same. It's just not the same. Uh, but how are you doing? Are you keeping Are you keeping warm with all this uh, cold snap weather? I'm keeping bundled up. I, you know, I'm I'm taking advantage of the situation. I'm sliding down the street like Shadow the Hedgehog. Uh, you know, rollerblades without the blades. I, uh, and it's very hilly where I live here here in Seattle. So you know, there's plenty of chances to. Uh, do some evil can evil shit. Just kind of ramp yourself off of a. Oh yeah, I know. If you get it, if you get it going good on the down, when you go on the up, you can get some like great air. It's some like tricky, tricky SX thing. Yeah, yeah. Some sick air. Do some ten eighties and land in the sound and uh, freeze to death. <laughs> land in the sound and immediately be flash freezed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's been my life. That's been my situation. How about you? Are, are you are you keeping safe out there? I I'm doing I'm doing pretty good, you know. I I I I also work in a very very hilly area, um. So I get to just you know I I I understand when old people talk about going uphill, uh, in the snow both ways. But when I get off of work, I'm like the little penguins in Mario, and I just slide down to my bus <laughs> stop. Uh, so that's pretty nice. Terrible on my shirts. <laughs> you yeah. go through them left and right. Oh, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so much more efficient than walking. Well, it's so much faster to do the, to, like, in the Mario 64 slide level. You yes. know, you have to, like, jump forward and uh, kind of let your front take the brunt of the fall. Yeah. And, uh, you go you go way faster that way than sitting down. Uh, but, yeah, I'm here, too. I, I'm I'm here because... You know, there there's a question lingering on everybody's minds these days, and I'm I'm, I'm wondering if you kind of know what I'm talking about. Oh, I think I think so. With uh, there's, there's that something in the air. There's something in the air. Everybody's, you know, there there's it, there's a lot of controversy. It's it's kind of become like a a guy versus girl sort of gender war on the sort of social meds, as it yeah. were. On the on the socials, I think is what they call them. Some, somewhere in, in the news media <laughs> on the socks <laughs> <In> their... <laughs> on the sock meds the sesh bro are you on the sesh yeah are you on the sesh are you socializing are you socializing <laughs> are you socializing media wise <laughs> you're not even socializing <laughs> um but yeah yeah do, do you know what question I, I of which i refer to and speak oh yeah of course uh cat person or dog person yes exactly that's yeah. that's exactly precisely it uh I think I'm a dog person. I think I think I'm like I mean I I like both. Mhm. But you know like everyone who says both it's like pick a side. And so I pick yeah. dog person as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the truth. I mean, I don't know. It it feels they they made actually a movie about this apparently. Oh, have really? you heard? Have you heard? Oh, Cats and Dogs. The- <laughs> that one too. That one too. Cat person. Oh, I There's, saw that. Yeah, it's got uh, Greg from Succession in it. Yeah, it's got Greg from Succession. Uh, we'll we'll talk about that. I'll, we'll talk about we'll Greg do some, from Succession. We'll do some therapy about Greg from Succession. Um, but yeah, I I I I suppose this film is um kind of you know it it's an adaptation, let's say, of 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 a short story, uh. Which is an adaptation of a Paul Schrader movie, 1985's Cat Person, yeah, which, which is. A, which is even funnier, an adaptation of uh, someone else's real story. <laughs> <laughs> which is an uh, adaptation of the 1940s Cat Person movie. <laughs> which is an adaptation of Brad Neely's Cat People. Yeah. <laughs> Cat People run, run like the wind. Uh, no, no, no. Cat Person is based off a short story, which uh, there's a lot of baggage to really start with there. Yeah, uh, it's <laughs> uh, very... Somehow feels like a step back from the doing adaptations of Twitter threads mm-hmm. thing because it's an adaptation of a story that mostly existed in Twitter threads. That, Which yeah. is to say that it didn't exist on as a New Yorker short story. But that's why everyone talked about it. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of complicated because like Zola and Dear David, those are adaptations that are directly like the they are adapted from the Twitter threads, whereas 
uh, Cat Person is like a more traditional adaptation of something that's actually that has actually been published, um, but felt really like such a Twitter firestorm. And the author even has like this kind of follow up short, um, not a story, but just like an autobio thing about the experience of going viral and how much it sucked for her. It's an adaptation that that can't that because it is being made because of the viral storm around it, it can't not also be about the <laughs> the conversation the conversation the the things that are happening on the internet what are, what are people talking about online these days with this cat person story people are using websites people reddit are, people are discuss yeah it's really just reddit is the one they talk about which is very funny to have to be the center of the story really hilarious the most like famously historically misogynist <laughs> social media that isn't an utterly anonymous uh but still kind of is um yeah so there's also there was also as you brought up the like the fact that cat person is like allegedly based on a true story of one of the author's friends and the guy in the story, who who the guy in the cat person story is based off, uh, died. Yeah, in real life. died in real life. And also, like the the friend, like if I remember correctly, like did date him. Like it's not even like like she basically wrote a a bad end to her friend's relationship. Well, yeah, which is like so lesbian. Yeah, it's no, so it's, beautiful. It's very funny to 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 have that dynamic depicted in the film via the the toxic uh femme cell redditor. <laughs> <laughs> um yes, so I I it, it's a, it's a short story, it's a short story about kind of male and female relationships um by by a lesbian author, which I think is great, written about her friend allegedly, which I think is probably not so great. Uh but, but nonetheless um it i i think that the short story is like fine it's 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 not like horrible it has like some kind of salient things to say about like the danger that women are made to feel and you know feel sometimes validly sometimes really not validly and we'll kind of expound upon that but like uh yeah i didn't hate it the the original short story yeah yeah no i i remember when i i reread it uh ahead of of watching this um that i was kind of taken back by how like not how nothing it is because that sounds dismissive but how much it's like if this was just a short story i read in like a compilation of short stories yeah i would i would not guess in a hundred years that this is like this would cause like a huge fur online yeah absolutely uh it's 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 such a it's just such a straightforward story (laughs) like really straightforward yeah it's really just kind of like a straightforward story where it's like people people were debating it as if it was like a a real thing that happened which i mean i guess to an extent it was right that wasn't like a known thing when the, the story was being argued so they were like arguing it in these like well how do you know this guy did that and it's like oh well because he's he's fiction because he's fictional and because he did it yeah because 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 it's a because it's not real and everything (laughs) that you read is 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 uh made up in the person's head yeah (laughs) that was part of the author's like autobio follow-up is like why the fuck do people think this is about me yeah (laughs) which is like totally valid like why it's like People reacted to it like it was somebody writing about their own date. Yeah. That they, like, their own dating thing they went on. Like, oh, you're being really uncharitable this, to this guy. And not like, no, 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 neither the, neither of these people are are real. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be, you you don't have to defend the honor of this man who stopped existing when you finished reading the story. <laughs> <laughs> he was born and died <laughs> on a, on a t- in a tab open on your Firefox yeah. browser. <laughs> like, like, he's not real, bro. He'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> women will... People, every, not just women, obviously, because a lot of men were had really annoying reactions to the short story, but motherfuckers will defend a fictional man before, before they def- <laughs> and to attack a real woman. Yeah, at the, at the literal <laughs> direct expense of a real woman. How fucking crazy is that? Um, so yeah, getting into the actual movie adaptation, uh, 
I have so many fucking problems with the ad. Like it, oh, it, it made me deranged. De- <laughs> <laughs> it made me really defensive of the short story that I didn't even care about before. Um, where like I think the short story like it has the juice to have like a really simple and kind of like maybe not a ninety minute but like a, a decent sixty minute film directed by someone in the vein of like a Cohen brothers yeah 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 i feel like that that's something it's it's missing that same sort of dark comedy yeah like there is a dark ish comedy the, no, the, no, there's a a comedy ish to the to the film but it's like light comedy and it's like no this works way better as like a dark comedy it's it's way too disney channel original movie oh god it's the, this scene with the climactic scene from the book where she's getting all the texts and then it ends with horror the way it's adapted in the film made me feel fucking insane. <laughs> like they're sitting in this dark, unreactive watching as these texts come in. Like they're learning that 9-11 just happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it, it, they're looking at their phones like it's a shelter in place zombie invasion. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's like... real dramatic. Uh, like that's, I, I don't know. Like, Let's let's get to that when we get to that. The first thing that I really want to point out um, is the horrible miscasting. Oh, Greg from Succession. Greg from Succession. Horrible miscast. <laughs> so in the original short story, I'm going to say that phrase so many times. Yeah. Uh, it, the guy is like fat and schlubby and like markedly old. Yeah. Like he's 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 technically the same age textually. Like he says he's 33. In both the short story and the film. That's all well and good. Greg is a narrow 33. He's a young 33. No, the film really recasts the age gap between them as, like, more uh, unnoticed, for lack of a better way to put it. Yeah. (laughs) Like, more, more you could reasonably see them being closer in age. Right. But in the... Short story, it's, like, pretty obvious from the jump that she's, like, significantly younger than him. Absolutely. 13 fucking years younger. Like, and the the short story, like, it, it does this wonderful job of kind of portraying, like, why women want to fuck murderer guys. Yeah. Because, like, when, when they are, like, protective of you, it feels really, like, the, the, the short story has, like, a really wonderful sort of, like, description of, uh, kind of the thing that happens when she expects him to like yell at her or or hit her or kill her and she and he doesn't yeah uh like that stuff is really salient when it's greg it just feels like a stunt cast that's meant to be like oh reddit incel guy kind yeah. of <laughs> like not I, I, like it's it's a totally it's like it's he he i think i texted you this when i was watching it he loses like any of the charm that is supposed to be in the story. Yeah. And it's not because the guy is like super charming in the story, but it's like there's, you get as the story goes on why she's attracted to him. And in this one adaptation, it, it feels like it's like, do you have like a, like a, like an, like a school shooter kink? Like what's (laughs) like, is your type like guys that are like really pathetic in a way where you're like, Oh, I can fix them. A little Napoleon dynamite Yeah. As opposed to, like, kind of brutish. Yeah. No, it, he, he's really missing that, the, the the right type of, like, oh, I can project a protector aura onto this guy. Yeah. And instead comes off, like, and they, they kind of play with that in the film where she has this the conversation with her friend where she's like, oh, I think he'll be, like, really thankful to have sex. Like, she's obviously flattered at this idea of being this, like, catch yeah but then that tonally doesn't match like any of the rest of the story and the way she interacts with him yeah. or like why she's attracted to him Ugh. yeah it's it's it kind of falls apart there uh you, you just don't get any sense of like why is she attracted to this guy he comes off as like really standoffish and like how do you like when he gets her number i'm like why what <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, I don't know. The, the, and also, like, one of the first things that happens in the movie, she texts her friends and calls him tall, dark, and problematic. Yeah. Uh, 
which didn't make any sense at all. It, I was so and it was really bad. I was like, what problematic thing did he do? <laughs> <laughs> What's problematic about him? He's I just a guy. It. He said like three words. It, 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 they just I, I, internet word, yeah. internet girls. It would have been really funny if they like had it like the movie he's seeing is like problematic. <laughs> Like, oh yeah, he's here to see, like, fucking Roman Polanski or something. <laughs> it's weird. We did a rerun of Straw Dogs, and he came to every showing. Yes. He's... <laughs> anyway, he's, like, really hot. <laughs> yeah, he came, we're doing a screening of Taxi Driver, and he came dressed like Taxi Driver. <laughs> <laughs> he kept telling me how cool that guy is. Yeah. <laughs> and, how hap- and how happy the ending is. <laughs> <laughs> um, But yeah, kind of on, on the... Uh, Sort of on the stunt casting tip, uh, we have we have a few other wonderful examples, uh, such as Isabella Rossellini doing a literal green porno episode. Uh, she's she's like the weird European teacher. Oh, I forgot about her character. Yeah, yeah. she has this. Uh, she has this series on YouTube called Green Porno, which is great. It's on. It's an awesome series, and it it's literally like they just commissioned her to do an episode of it in this movie which i think is you know that's probably one of the better impulses that this movie has had yeah um same thing as uh fred melamed uh being briefly here as a therapist who fred melamed famously cy abelman from a serious man oh the guy who fucks the main character's wife or whatever yeah 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 um those are good stunt casting. I, I will say the scene of her fantasizing about him talking about her in therapy, very, very accurate. That was a good choice. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was like, I, I kind of flip-flopped on the sort of, um, the ways that it did, like, some kind of, like, Ferris Bueller stuff. Uh, I thought her talking to herself in the sex scene, it's like, I, I guess I can't really think of a better way to do that, but that felt really corny. Yeah. But the therapy stuff was pretty good because it was like, Ugh, that kiss that fucking kiss scene that was probably the best part of the movie for me that that was the part where like i was kind of like okay maybe this is like a better adaptation than i thought yeah and then it like that that is the be- that is the only scene that feels like an actual attempt to adapt the gist of the story yeah into uh, a medium that is not uh, a, a short story. Now, not writing. <laughs> I think that's the biggest problem with the film is that it's is that it's a film and it's trying to adapt something that works way better as writing, and it just tries to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's like too faithful in some places and way not faithful enough in oh. others. Oh boy, howdy, is it not? Faithful <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. There's a lot of additions here. There's her like feminist Reddit. Best be- bestie who she breaks up with at some point in the movie obligatorily uh and like who who has the most annoying fucking subplot in the world she oh my god okay i i'm very torn on her mm-hmm. because at first i thought her character was kind of you know i i was like annoyed by the character because it's like oh, okay they were like we need to have we need to have we need to cite both sides so we need an annoying feminist yeah <laughs> um but like, I, I think I, I was about to just it's like I wish the movie was more about their dynamic mm-hmm. because I actually really like liked this weird femme cell redditor who like clearly is kind of a little bit motivated by like jealousy of her roommate, but is like sinking that into like pretty reasonable <laughs> complaints. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's like I've I've. I, you know, I was in college. I've, I've, I knew so many, like, girls who had, like, dynamics like that with their roommate. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought that was, like, decently air quote written, but her actual arc is fucking terrible. It's awful. <laughs> the payoff of, like, oh, actually, this guy who pretended to be a woman to be a moderator on my women's subreddit. Not a bad guy. He he's, gave he gave me a ride. <laughs> he's an Uber driver. He's like a he's a man of the people. He's yeah, like, 
you know, the working class or whatever. And it's so funny because, like, then, like, when I saw that that's what they're doing, I was like, oh, my God, are you fucking kidding me? And then they don't even do it right because he doesn't do anything. (laughs) He gives her a ride. (laughs) They don't have, like, a conversation that we see or anything like that. She doesn't learn anything about him that changes the way she was, like, making assumptions about him. He doesn't say anything. He's just like... Oh, yeah, let me give you a ride. This seems like an emergency situation. I'm going to react like a normal person to an emergency situation. It's just like, wow. Oh, my God. Men do have feelings. Once again, <laughs> men getting away with the bare minimum. Yeah. What a fucking adaptation. How crazy. I think that's actually like literally what it is. It's like it's literally like he gets he changes her mind doing the bare minimum and that doesn't make sense for a character who, like, yells at her friends at one point, did we ask to be invited to a party? <laughs> uh, um, I also hate her theater kid friends. Oh, they're, they're, they're terrible. They're, they, t- they, they're just they, terrible. They, they should have, they feel like they would have been left over from, like, I think, uh, like, I could see a draft of this film where we barely see Robert. Mm-hmm. And so everything you learn fr- about him is via what she tells her friends and like a few select things and texts. Yeah. Because that would also then like capture the same vibe of the short story, which is that it's told from her perspective. Yeah. Um, but then if they're not going to do that, who are these fucking assholes? <laughs> <laughs> who are these fucking characters are meeting? <laughs> they're... <sighs> Yeah, I hate them, but they're they're barely there, which is kind of a blessing uh, in disguise. I mean, like, they're needed ostensibly for, um, I guess, that scene that's described where, like, they everybody circles around her at the bar to get her out. Oh, yeah. Um, which is another, like, fun thing that's such a 20-year-old, you know, <laughs> path, emotional palette of, of, of thing that would happen. Uh, but, I don't know. Very, 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 very silly. Um... I have I have notes from when I watched this movie. Oh yeah, I saw well, this. <laughs> one of them is uh, well. Anyway, the whole scene of him bringing her food from Seven Eleven is fucking weird. He says he has this weird comment about Blackula, and then he destroys an ant with the most violent, fucking scary movement. And then and then he locks her in a closet. It, it's all just very strange and out of out of touch with the story. I, I was so. It's like setting up this thing of it's like oh should she trust him or not. But it's like, I don't think that has to do with how much you do or don't trust a given person. Yeah. I think a guy that you're hanging out with for the first time in real life and you end up locked in a room with him, that's just scary. It's scary. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's like, the, I could have the most fine vibes from someone if I end up locked in a room in a, like, basically empty school at like 10 p.m. I'm freaking the fuck out. <laughs> uh, that's like, that's, that's the most valid phobia. That's yeah. <laughs> like, um, yeah, I, I, I really, I don't, I don't think anybody could. Uh, I, I also wrote under the skin is a better adaptation of cat person than cat person. Yeah. <laughs> God. Oh. Um, I also wrote, uh, well, okay. To paraphrase this note, um, I, I do just want to say, if you end up visiting your family over winter break yeah. and you find yourself on an informal small stage dancing with your mom in front of your family, <laughs> singing a song about how you, the only man you'll ever love is daddy, I'm victim blaming you. Yeah. <laughs> you deserve to be in that position. You deserve the trauma and the horror that comes from <laughs> doing that insane psycho shit. Like... And if this is happening, don't let that happen to you. Don't, don't let don't, them don't do that. Don't, don't let them do that to don't you. Don't get dog toothed. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> that this is where the movie starts to really kind of slide down a hill because she talks to, she talks to her old friend from back home that she tries to fuck, and instead of coming out, well, no, he doesn't even cut out come out in the original story. He's just non-binary and fucking around with dudes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's non-binary yes. anyway sorry I'm, I'm i'm uh sorry i'm a boomer i was born in the 50s so yeah. you know <laughs> uh but uh I didn't, retconned, I didn't even remember that from the retcon yeah changed to be asexual because asexuality 
is more acceptable to mainstream people than non-binary. Than being non-binary and, and gay. <laughs> we would rather you just didn't fuck, like yeah. in Heartstopper. I, I... That is a hot take, but I don't know. I think you're right. Like, because, yeah. like, that's such a weird thing to change otherwise. People like, need to I, know about asexuality. No one knows about non-binary yet. Yeah, because, like, I feel like... I feel like if it was just, oh, yeah, like, I'm non-binary and sleeping with dudes, that's, like, kind of less weird. Whereas, like, the fact that, like, he in this one is like, oh, I actually found out that I'm asexual. So I'm never going to have sex again. Yeah. Is, like, such a bizarre... Like, the way it's treated is so bizarre. I'm like, that's, like... I've never met an asexual person who came out like that. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, that's such a, like, weird way to talk about. Like, that is such a, like... Are you just trying to curve her? <laughs> oh, actually, <laughs> I'm, like, not having sex ever again right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's... I mean possibly but yeah and and she of course has like this hyper sort of fem cell reaction to it i i just love the word fem cell it's it's a great it's it, i'm so glad we're getting fem cell cinema like this <laughs> it's it's pretty good actually um yeah it, it it's she's just like oh so we're not going to fuck yeah shit fuck um and then she gets horny and sends um uh, sends nudes robert, the, to yeah. robert or whatever the because then it also sets up that weird scene where she's talking to Robert later. It's like, oh, actually, my ex-boyfriend is asexual, which means he's not having sex. And it's like, oh, that's good. Yeah. And again, it's just such a, like, bizarre... I mean, I think even in the original story, it's kind of bizarre that, like, oh, the only reason her ex-boyfriend from high school wouldn't want to have sex with her is if because he literally hates having sex with women. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like it. you could just make the characters like, oh, no, I like not interested <laughs> yeah just be like nah sorry because at some point now i really want to know what was the conversation like he's gotta be asexual <laughs> <laughs> it can't be that they're non-binary and gay or bi or that they're not interested we gotta change it yeah. let's have a really important conversation about asexuality in the middle of this film yeah that goes nowhere <laughs> let's punch this up yeah let's <laughs> let's get some drama <laughs> Let's let's uh, let's make a let's take a story about like the sort of complicated dance of like should I shouldn't I and like danger and stuff and and just add in like some real high school fucking yeah ha add in a part where the guy flips a chair and is like let me tell you about the <laughs> asexual spectrum <laughs> oh my god <laughs> let me tell you about the split attraction model <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah the movie kind of toddles around toddles along on that tip she has horrible horrible sex with him she dissociates it's really sad actually yeah <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of sad it's kind of fucked up um he's kind of a he's kind of a wet noodle they change it another thing they change interestingly the, they go to see in the store in the short story he suggests that she go see with him as a date a holocaust movie I forgot that. That's Which so funny. Which is way funnier. That's so funnier. <laughs> That's so much funnier. But then they didn't get to do the annoying, like, Reddit thing of, like, check out... I mean, okay, I, I kind of... No, I don't like, but I kind of get what they're doing with the Harrison Ford thing of, yeah. like, you know, oh, this is the model guys have for dating yeah. and, like, romance. But the reason I said the Reddit thing is because it's like, uh, but is that really applicable to like Zoomers right. dating now? Like, yeah, if the character is supposed to be 20, like, I don't know if like most guys, even guys in their 30s are going to still be walking around being like the thing that a dame loves <laughs> <laughs> is is Harrison Ford in a movie from 50 years ago. <laughs> most. Most guys aren't like like most guys have some sort of a wrong think. Yeah, but that's a that's pretty in twenty twenty four. That's like that would be like if the guy was forty. I'd buy it a lot. <laughs> yeah, more. but like thirty is kind of pushing it to still be having that as like his model for romance. Yeah, I don't know. And it's not like there's not newer stuff they could have had him had him model his romantic ideals off of. Right. 
Yeah, it, it's, I mean, like, it's a, it's a salient sort of thing about um, kind of the history of just, like, the models of quote-unquote romance that people have and, like, uh, you know, misogyny. It, it, it's real. Like but, I said, I, I kind of like it and then yeah. it's like, okay, the film's introducing in this textual thing about, like, the scripts that heterosexuality has and, like, the mismatches that they cause and the bind that it puts, like, women in especially, but also the way in which, like, you know, it doesn't exactly give men a good script to, like, navigate that yeah. bind with either. But again, it's just really hard to believe that a guy in his 30s <laughs> <laughs> would still be, like, would have, like, not seen, like, feminist versus video game like videos <laughs> by now. <laughs> yeah, like, a lot of people are really consuming a lot of that nowadays. <laughs> People are, you know, people are into their, into their theory, into their video essays, into their fucking shit. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's complicated. Um, but yeah, so, so horrible sex. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, it kind of culminates, like, right after they have sex, she kind of realizes that the relationship isn't right. It's not working. It doesn't feel right. Uh, and then her friend takes her phone out of her hand, much as in the original story, and just texts, like, uh, I'm no longer into you, stop texting me. Um, which, I would, it's very 20 years old, and I love that about it. Yeah. It's also not wrong to do, or it's kind of fucked up, but it's like, I, I think that, I think that the main issue that is, if I remember in the short story, doesn't she go like a few days without responding and then her friend does it? She, that's the crazy part. In the short story, she's way less needy than the guy. The guy, uh, the guy is portrayed as hypersensitive and like emotional and like uh, kind of okay. double and triple texting her even during the relationship. And then all of a sudden she's like the needy one in the film way more. Uh... That was interesting, but but yes, you're correct. Like she waited like three days or something like that. Because like that 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 dynamic of it, I liked a lot more because that also really fits with this dynamic of just like your friend being like, "Dude, come on!" Like like <laughs> either either ghost or don't, but don't be waffling on if you're going to ghost or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, really true. Because uh, that was the main reason. That was the other thing that I was like, like, "Wow, she like did that like really fast in like a way that is very like." <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh and then like so so that text kind of simmers for a little bit. He he texts her something pretty amiable and just like, well, you know, that's I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm sorry you feel yeah, that way. If you ever want to read back to me, yeah. Yeah. Um it's it's like a pretty normal text. Uh and then she spots him in a bar, um, and it's not really explained in the film, but like the bar is like the first place in the story that she like was going to have a date with him or something or something like that. Like it was a bar near her work that she talked about. So it's, it was like weird to see him there. Yeah. Uh, but that's, that context is a little bit lost in the film. Oh no. I, 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 they, I see where they put that in the film. It is right. lost in the film, but it's cause they have the line about, I think you're supposed to get that. That's the bar they were going to go to originally because, she, but then he's like, Oh, that's a student bar. We don't need to go to that. We can go to a real bar. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think you're right. So like, I, but like, I, I, I don't think the film does a good job of conveying that she's at the student bar that she was talking about earlier. Yeah. Cause I don't think they show it in any reference to that. That's true. At least there's a line yeah. there. Uh, so that's, you know, that's, that's all well and good. Um, but in either case, he's there, he's drinking, and they kind of do, like, the they, they all shuffle around her and, like, escort her out, like, Secret Service. Yeah. Uh, which is, again, very 20 years old and very, very adorable, very funny. Um, and then they huddle around their phone and they get all those texts that say, uh, did I do something wrong? He's basically drunk texting. Yeah. He's just like, oh, fuck you, you know, sorry. Oh, I, I can't believe I said that. Oh, you're a whore. And, yeah. and it just ends with the word whore. Um, and that's where the short story ends. That's where the short story ends. And it's great because the short story gets in. It introduces enough of this ambiguity. The The title comes specifically from the fact that he talks about his cats all the time. Yes, that's but right. But then she doesn't see them when he goes over. But she doesn't know if that's because he doesn't have them or if, like if he was lying about them or, you know, people put their cats in a room when they have someone over. Like she, she yeah. just doesn't know if he does ha does or not have cats. Yes. And that's important. Yes. Because a big thing in the original story, and the big reason why people, like, again, tried to argue the integrity of a man 
who doesn't exist, <laughs> is that it introduces a lot of ambiguity because you're supposed to be in this position of not in the same position she's in, where you yeah. don't know. Oh, is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Is he shitty? Is he lying? Is he manipulating her? All of this stuff. And the point of the story, I would argue, is that in the end, it doesn't really matter because he still ends up reacting like a shitty guy either way. Right. So, like, even if he is a good guy, he still kind of reacts in a really shitty way to the fact that the 20-year-old he was seeing uh, is bad at navigating a, a breakup. Yeah. Uh Pretty, pretty, pretty effective in and out short story. Like I said, kind of weird how it causes huge controversy, but I get it. Gets in, gets out. Yes. The film decides, <laughs> what if that's the end of act two? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in act three, uh... we remove any ambiguity from anything and also make it like way, way worse. <laughs> it's, oh my God. Yeah, so this is where the movie really fucking face plants. Uh, because, yeah, like you said, I, I love I love the, like, allegory. Does he, does he have cats? Does he not have cats? That having to be... Women having to kind of hold two things in their head where a guy can be... He can be good, like a good guy, or he can be a murder and sell rape, rapist guy. And you have to kind of hold both possibilities at the same time. Um, that's great. Uh, one of the first things that happens after the text is he, like, stalks her at work. Yes. Uh, so, you know, immediately the scale is tipping. Yeah. Um, and then she calls the cops <laughs> and, and talks to the cops and the cop is just like, you watch too much true, you, you do, you watch too much true crime, which is fair. Which is, which is fair. And she is shown to have, uh, an anxiety disorder. Yes. This is the point of the film where I started to realize, I think they just wanted to make like a thriller. Because that explains right. all the weird, like, horror movie fantasy scenes she has. That's right, yeah. Because she also, re like, one of the first things that happens in the film is she uh, has a nightmare that a dog that she tried to sneak into her dorm and then her, her mean, her mean RA made her put <laughs> the dog outside. Uh, the dog comes back and, like, murders her in the, uh, murders the RA and, like, splatters the wall with blood. <laughs> The RA, who's like straight uh, a a side character from Legally Blonde, this is the only way I can just her, all of her dialogue is about being an RA. Yeah, it's like so funny, and unhumanized. <laughs> yeah, so, and that's that's weird too because like, well, I guess we'll get back to the dog because there's like a weird thing there's there. there's a whole weird thing of that dog. But yes, <laughs> keep that dog in mind. Keep that dog in mind. <laughs> that dog is what the whole this was a bad adaptation rests on. <laughs> You made a movie called Cat Person, Person and, you and it had more dog than cat in it. You dumb, God damn it. Uh, yeah. So, I, I don't know. But anyway, so then she goes to a self-defense store and they meet this kind of hilarious, weird guy. Uh, and, and she gets like $200 worth of shit on a student salary. Yeah. On the, her oh, student Oh, easily loan. way more than $200. Some yeah. of that, she, she had, like, three things of mace, like, knuckle, knuckle dusters. <laughs> like, she had, like, she looked like she was about to take on MS-13. <laughs> <laughs> she was, she was about to go on the, she was about to do the raid, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> she was, she was gonna, she had explosive, she had C4. That bitch had a drone, like. And then she has this, like, insane plot this is where we get like no woman ever territory yeah. like, where she's like i need to plant a tracking device on his car so, so I, know I know he's, he's not stalking, stalking me, me. <laughs> which for a moment i was like is the movie gonna go in the opposite direction where it's like actually she's the stalker because <laughs> that would be kind of funny yeah but no <laughs> yeah. she has a falling out with her friend which is maybe fair, because maybe her, her friend is the one who was like, yeah, let's put a tracking device on his car. <laughs> Utterly psychotic. Um, and then, yeah, and then the friend breaks up with her. Boo-hoo-hoo. Uh, and then, uh, so she goes to his place to plant the tracking device. Also insane. It, well, insane thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> breaks into his house to do breaks it. Breaks into his garage and his house. Um, and then finds out that the dog from before is is in his house, which I guess we could take to mean, like, he's sad and he's kind of 
it's like a side effect of him stalking her that the dog just hangs around the dorms and he hangs around the dorms, so he adopts a dog, I guess. That's the sort of subtextual language that the film up to this point has not been good at doing. Good at doing. Yeah. Uh, so well, I don't know if I believe that it's, wholly. It's even weirder because it's supposed to be like, oh, it's his dog. So I'm like, so he took his dog to go stalk her? And then just, before he knew her, before he knew her, and then just let the dog loose. <laughs> yeah, it's all... it's it's it doesn't it doesn't really make sense because she's like, oh my god, you've been following me. Yeah, and then he's like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, but from when? Because that dog appeared before you met her. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, are you talking about? It's... <laughs> It's very strange. It very, very strange. Maybe we're not catching something. Re- write a comment if yeah. we're not catching something. Just write a, you know, write a comment right now that just says anything. Just write, hey, I guess. Uh, but if you know more about if the dog, if you know than what the do. fuck is going on with this dog, <laughs> uh, but also it's supposed to be like oh, he's not a cat person, he's a dog person. Whoa. Which I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit later. In the most like saw ass twist. He ha- also has cats. Yeah. And they're revealed literally like she opens the door and they run out and the camera pans up to her shocked face like, oh my God, he is a cat person. <laughs> Here's my question. Do the cats run out of the house like all the way or do they burn to death? We don't see them, but we do see the dog. So I think canonically that she killed the cat. So the movie <laughs> with cat in the title kills two cats. <laughs> kills two cats that we see for a total of... 10 frames. <laughs> that's fucking awesome. Actually, no, that's great. That's <laughs> awesome. That's perfect. Um, yeah, so basically, it's like, it's a whole thing. He finds her trying to plan a tracking device, and then there's this sort of, like... She tries to pepper spray him, but she doesn't know what she's doing. So uh, pepper sprays herself. That Which is which is hilarious. Yeah. I do think that's extremely funny. <laughs> uh, and then she falls and hits her head on a cinder block. <laughs> yes. It, it does this whole, like, it's a very post-parasite sort of dramatic escalation that really doesn't work for me at fucking all. Oh, it, I was going to say, I think the biggest problem with that is that they're still trying to do this tightrope of, like, ambiguity where it's like, oh, who do you think made the wrong decisions here? And it's like, oh, him. Yeah. Like, <laughs> her, too. Like, yeah, breaking into his house to plan a tracking device. That's that's also an escalation and an insane person thing to do. Absolutely. His follow-up to that is to tie her to a chair and talk about possibly trying to drug her so that way she doesn't remember breaking into his house because he thinks that if she leaves his house with an obvious injury that he's going to go to jail despite him assumedly having proof on hand that she broke into his house <laughs> with a tracking device. It's a little, it's a little bit of a clown show. It, it's, you know, it's trying to go for some sort of Coen brothers sort of, I, I don't really Escalation, know. Escalation, but it's just, it doesn't, even if he absolutely is this kind of like, oh, people always believe the women guy. Uh, people always believe the women guy is not going to see a woman knock herself unconscious in his house and not immediately go, I can call the cops on this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Castle Doctrine, hell yeah! <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just very, it's just very interesting. Oh, Disney, Disney Channel, Disney movie logic. Yeah, it's it, you know, it's it's. But whatever. that's also the scene where he confesses to like stalking her, and he's like, "Oh, I thought it could have been like our lovely story," and that's like the same thing of like, I don't know. I think he, he's in the wrong, and like not even like ambiguously in the wrong. Like I don't think a PUA guy. Yeah. It, is going to be like, yeah, stalking is good. <laughs> <laughs> it goes from a short story about two two soft animal bodies yeah. into a movie about, like, some cardboard cutouts. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's it, it becomes very two-dimensional uh, with, with these sort of multiple revelations, I guess. Um, and then it just goes all the way off the rails, and they they fight. For, they have a fucking fight they scene. They have, like, an extended, like, John Wick fight scene. It's crazy. Th- this being, like, a 33-year-old nurse <laughs> and a 20-year-old college student yeah. beat the shit out of each other. Yeah. And they're, like, fine. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, they just walk away from it. 
it's fine. It's chill. It's good. It's and now the real black eyes that she has, you know, no one's going to ask about those. Yeah. So, yeah, and then it culminates in, like, they fight, they fight so hard that they burn down the fucking house. Yeah. And them he, still in it. And he's like, you gotta get in this vent with me. And she's like, I can't trust you. Which, again, also insane, because it's like, okay, I get it. But also, girl, you're in a burning house. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're kind of like, okay. <laughs> Then Vern did die. I don't know. What do you want? From, what do you want out of this situation? <laughs> Between, like, the thing about, like, this type of escalation and, like, oh, we're in the basement, but the, but then we got to go into the basement of the basement. Yeah. Between this movie and Barbarian, like, how does Bong Joon-ho's cock taste? Yes. <laughs> Real dumbass fucking it's movie. So, it's, I, it made me wish that the rest of the movie was like that. If the if the movie like did the whole story original yeah. story in the first act and then the rest of the movie is like this, I'd be like, okay, yeah, funny. <laughs> what if they made like a three hour adaptation? <laughs> <laughs> but but still like Disney Channel original movie tone. Yeah, so it's just like by 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 hour two, people in the audience are just like looking at each other, like, like what what happened? What is going? on? They kill off both the original characters <laughs> and introduce completely new characters to the story. The film cell redditor like becomes exposed to radiation, and becomes Alex <laughs> Mack, and and then fucking aliens show, like yeah, go crazy, go stupid. Uh, yeah, it doesn't it it just it just stops just short of that level of ridiculousness yeah. and. And the only thing that, that really happens is, like, they have this scene where it's like, oh, the house is burned down, it's an empty lot, and he moved away to the coast. And then she's like, oh, but maybe he didn't, you know, I guess I, I'll never know if he actually moved away to the coast or not, if he just, just told me to say that. And it's like, that guy sucked, but, like, I don't know, I feel like the events of that night are pretty traumatizing enough that it's, like, not unusual that he might leave yeah. <laughs> the city. Yeah, when your house burns down, like, because of a bad relationship directly because of like a bad like essentially like two date long relationship you know what that in context with the very end where like michael gandolfini shows up <laughs> and is like you're hot and she like smiles she does this deranged fucking taylor swift smile oh, at the camera God, yeah like let's do it all again <laughs> like oh. This is a woman hating ass movie. Like she is fully portrayed as the crazy one. Yeah, we need a my well, we need a cat person too, where it goes full like Japanese pinku film, and she's just oh like God. constantly like getting involved in these short relationships that end in like fire, death, des despair. She needs to become the bitch from audition. Exactly. That would be <laughs> that would be the only like that's the only justice that we that we're gonna get. I forgot about that ending because it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any fucking sense. She's like, she's like, oh yeah, let's you know, let's keep dating men. But yeah, let's just keep dating. Which guys is not the point of the original story, right? The, the point of the original story is stop dating men. Which, by the way, no, no. I won't. Yeah. <laughs> nice try. Nice try. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's. I think the other reason why that's crazy, like that ending sucks too, is because it's like. She, in the opening, she's so obviously hitting on him. Yes. Like, Robert, she is obviously flirting on him, and she's really bad at it. And so at first you think he's disinterested, and then he's like, it seems like, oh, he's getting like, oh, you're hitting on me. But this guy, she's like, not. Yeah. Like, not <laughs> even a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know, like... Just just a lot of insane decisions. This right? is a very bad adaptation. <laughs> I, I you know, and and kind of like part and parcel to I think it's fair that it's a bad adaptation because uh it seems as though nobody read this fucking story correctly. Yeah. Like just you know, we we alluded earlier to like the fight the Twitter firestorm that occurred about Cat Person, which I was only like I, I don't know, I, I didn't look directly into the void on that when it was happening. Um it seemed pretty annoying. I, I remember when it was first going around, I tried reading the story the first time. I was just, I got like maybe halfway through and I was like, this story's like nothing. <laughs> I was like, people are, this is what, this is another one of those like, oh, people are arguing with like 
their ex. Yeah. And they're blaming a story for it. Oh my and like, God. that's on like all sides too. Like it, like all, every time there's discourse like this, you look into it and you start to realize, Oh, people are just like arguing with someone else. And they're yeah. like, this has become the totem for the argument. It's remarkable to me how much discourse is just the shadow self of the poster. Yeah. <laughs> Taking the reins on their like... Bro, just tell your roommate you want them to do the dishes. More. Literally! Like, I don't... Like, why are you... Why do you gotta involve us in this? <laughs> like, oh, you were triggered by a story about how hard it is to communicate with men because you don't communicate with men? Yeah. Because you refuse to? Because you have, like, a terrible media diet and a terrible social life? You know? That sounds rough. I guess don't date a thirty-three-year-old. Did you need that to be? Did you need to be told that? <laughs> did, you, did you need to hear that? Most twenty-year-olds do need to hear that. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> That's like a PSA. You know, just oh, this story upset you because you went on a date with someone a decade younger than you, and they were bad at communicating their desires and seemed really wishy-washy. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you, bro. <laughs> Maybe, maybe you shouldn't do that again, I guess. 20 year olds, 20 year olds don't even know how to pronounce enmeshment yet. Yes. So you really can't expect too much from them. Bro, 20 year olds don't even know that the body keeps the score. Yet. <laughs> their, body, their body's still racking up the score. Their, their body's still tallying up the points to divvy out later. Their body's still shuffling the deck. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, I don't know. Bad Bad film. Bad film. Bad film. <laughs> too, too much informed by the discourse, but also not enough informed to, like, really have anything to say about it. Yeah. Or trying to say too many things at once. Yeah. Very funny and very revealing to me still, though, that they were, like, trying to strike that balance with Robert and then, like, made him way worse than he comes off in the actual story. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, he sucks. And it's, like, as a as a kind of as a kind of final like footnote, I guess like yeah. again the soft animal body effect of the, of the short story like you are not made to feel like that that lack of ambiguity in the movie like it's like Midsummer is a better fucking adaptation of Cat Person than yeah. Cat Person. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Like Under the Skin is a better adaptation. Like there's th like. Which is, you know, I, I hate to say this about movies that were made by men. I, I, I truly and honestly hate to. Um, but, and I don't, I don't actually know if Cap, the Capper's movie was made, directed, made by a I man. believe it's directed by a woman, but I, let me see who adapted it. Yeah. Check, check, check on that. Check on Cause that. I, I, I'm trying to remember, cause I, Susanna Fogel. Uh huh. Well, so, so the problem is that it was adapted by a woman, uh, the director, um, but she's also, um, the co-writer and director of The Spy Who Dumped Me. So, uh, okay. I don't think it's because she's a woman. I think it's because she makes bad movies. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I'm saying. It's like... Uh, oh, thank God. I, I, guess... I missed right here and I thought it said that uh, her uncle was Jerry. Oh, was um, Jared Fogel? <laughs> oh, my Jeremy fucking Fogel. <laughs> God. Um, but yeah, I, like, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I would kill to see Chantel Ackerman's cat person. I would kill to see... Uh, you know, a a like a, a woman director kind of take this more seriously than the spy who dumped me person, um, but kind of as it stands, like the 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 short story, uh, kind of like it el el elicits a backhanded sympathy for for this man, where you have to kind of run up against the thing that women run up to, where it's like he is sad. He is lonely. Yeah. He is probably going to talk about this to his fucking therapist. And I am made to feel more bad about that than I should be by society because I'm a woman. And, like, I do feel responsible for his feelings in, in ways that feel both valid and not valid. Uh, but that's all gone. Yeah. Cut, cut that. All that shit's cut out. Yeah. <laughs> that's to 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 have a reading of the of the story where that's the fat that needs to be trimmed is is uh, insane to me both from the standpoint of the people who made the film and from the standpoint of just, like, readings of it on social media or whatever. Um, interesting. Interesting phenomenon. Yeah, no, it's... it's. We get we we don't get the cat person we want. <laughs> we get the cat person we deserve. Uh... I, I will say in this film's 
defense. <laughs> um, in in this sort of modern, weird, like, like post pop feminist like filmmaking, where like women in filmmaking means that women make films that are very shallowly about women. Mm. This one's better. This one's better than the average. I would agree. The average is really bad. (laughs) (laughs) The the average is very depressingly bad. Yeah. This was entertaining to me in some kind of way. Uh, Kind of in the same vein as like, don't worry, darling. I know you didn't like that one as much as I did, but I I've, I've softened a little on don't worry, darling. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've come around a little bit more on it. I don't forgive them for having a line explaining why he's British. (laughs) <laughs> I think that I think no, that was still a bridge too far. I thought that was so fucking funny. I thought that was hilarious. I thought their delivery of that like straight faced was like crazy. It's it's very funny. Um but like yeah, it it's 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 certainly like didactic and doesn't quite do what it seems to want to do in in you know the both these movies in the same way. Uh but there's some entertainment to be had. There's some entertainment. It 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 really does capture certain things like weird, just weird anxiety behavior. I like the the throwaway gag about like, oh yeah, here's the taser. Like you just have to recharge it, and her friend just immediately cutting her off. Like, <laughs> no, she can't charge her phone. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> like good. like there's there's good character. Like I said, even like with that character, it's like I've seen that type of character in so many movies, and they're always so poorly written. And this one at least feels like. Oh, this is like you actually were or knew someone like this. Yeah, I, like, I accurately Reddit brained. Yeah, like you you are accurately depicting a Reddit brain person who's not wrong, but is just like very very codependently like oh like the friend who designs herself the mother role when it's like you're not a you're like the bad mom <laughs> you're like the mom that sends someone to therapy because of it. You're the no wire hangers mom. Yeah. <laughs> Like, doing too fucking much. So, like, there's there's components that I like, and so ultimately I think, probably for the same reason a lot of other in this sort of new pop feminist media tends to be so... Yeah. Uh, is it's probably because it's being made in a studio system where they still gotta, you know, they gotta play to the save the cat people. Yeah. Which I... is funny, because they didn't fucking save the cat in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even try. Yeah, That's how, kind of what I felt when they changed Holocaust movie to like Harrison Ford oeuvre. Yeah. Um it's not the worst change in the world, but it kind of it it it's it it feels very like approval by committee. It it feels very it's like no we this that's have a scene where she goes, "Ugh, Star Wars is boring." Yeah. Yeah, and in the process of making a movie, you know, no matter how female led, like there's going to be like suits, execs, exactly. men. Yeah. White, white men. We need a line like in the Barbie movie about the Godfather. We gotta have a line like that in this. Yeah, Something like that. Yeah. It's just like we need to refer to the world of men in yeah. a more <laughs> in a more charitable and uh more central way. Um so I don't know. That's that's comes with the territory, I I suppose, but gotta forgive it. Yeah. A little bit. I mean hey, men men have been making shitty movies about being men. Forever. For time immemorial. Most movies. Most movies. And hey, you know who's making the best shitty movie? You know who's making the best movies about men? About men being men? Women. That's <laughs> the goddamn truth. <laughs> Stream Mikey and Nikki right Stream now. Mikey and, Stream Mikey and Nikki right fucking now. <laughs> right fucking now, bitch. Then come back and go on our Patreon and listen yeah. to our yeah, patron exclusive episode of Film Critters Throws It Back. Um... Yeah, well, I'm I'm glad I came in and t- and and chatted about about we this. finally and we finally answered the question. Yeah, cat person, dog person, lizard person, lizard person, or weird girl with rats. Oh, weird rat girl, weird rat girl, snake guy, snake guy. Uh, um, red flag would be ferret. Ferrets a little t- unless they're over the age of twenty five. Okay, okay. Because I feel like if you're under twenty five and you have a ferret, you're irresponsible. If you're over 25 and have a ferret, you're probably, like, really responsible. Because those things are illegal. (laughs) In a lot of states. (laughs) Yeah, it's basically, like, a a marmot. It's like something... It's like the type of game animal that you, like... It, like, smells bad. So, like, you have to, like, really be, like, on top of your shit to have a ferret. Oh, yeah. Or you smoke so much weed in the house and don't clean up that you don't notice. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, you know, six in one, half a dozen in the other. <laughs> it's going to smell like shit either fucking way. So. Yeah, might as well just let the thing that smells like shit run around. <laughs> um, I, th- I feel like tarantula days. Oh, that's a powerful. Yeah, tarantula days are good. That's very, po- that's highly powerful. Uh, Yeah. I, I don't know. The, 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 the real type of person you can trust is someone who owns like a chimpanzee, like a pet. Yeah, especially if they just like let it let it like, do roam its thing, around, yeah. whatever. Yeah, there's so much. There's so much like ape, like ape content. Ape content on TikTok. <laughs> ape ape uh, taking taking advantage of apes on TikTok. <laughs> it really is something. Oh my gosh! I saw I saw an ape playing. I saw an ape on the final boss of Minecraft. <laughs> I saw a chimpanzee beating the Ender Dragon. That's. God. And I said, "I'm so proud of Dream for getting that far." I, 